of Australian, I've absolutely adored the way that the animated children's show Bluey has become more than just a source of entertainment. It is a cultural phenomena that celebrates and highlights the distinct features of Australian life. It has captured the hearts of viewers not only here, but all around the world by incorporating elements of Aussie culture, beliefs and lifestyle in a way that seems authentic and contemporary, whilst also being easily digestible by those living anywhere. The Hiller Family! It goes without saying that the main characters from Bluey are anthropomorphic dogs, but what kind of dogs are they exactly? And why is this relevant? Well, Bluey and Bandit are both blue healers, also known as Australian cattle dogs. Bingo and Chili are red healers, which I'm sure you could guess, fall into the same category. The breed is known for their sturdy, muscular build and distinctive blue, red or mottled coats. Mottled is such a weird word. <laughs> The Australian cattle dog breed was developed by early Australian settlers to handle the challenging conditions of the Australian outback. They needed a breed that could manage cattle across vast distances and harsh terrains, but by far the most interesting part of the breed was created by crossing domestic herding dogs with... Wild dingoes? Yep, the free-ranging wild dogs native to the continent who are considered to be Australia's largest terrestrial predator and play a huge role in the country's ecosystems. I don't even want to know how they managed to breed one of those with a domesticated dog. I'm sure it wasn't pretty. Anyway, the traits of the Gila family in Bluey reflect the typical characteristics of Australian cattle dogs, intelligence, energy, and a playful nature. An authentic slice of Australian life. One of Bluey's most notable aspects is its authentic portrayal of Australian life. The series is set in Brisbane, Queensland, as evidenced by everything from the architecture of the buildings to the brilliant nature settings featured in the episodes. The creators have done a fantastic job of mixing features that are distinctively Australian, such as natural flora and animals, suburban settings and the informal, laid-back lifestyle associated with the Australian people. <coughs> Language and vernacular! Australian slang and vernacular are used frequently throughout Bluey's conversation, which gives it an air of genuineness and charm. Phrases like, good on ya, fair dinkum, give it a go, and she'll be right, are used casually and introduce non-Australian audiences to the regional dialect. And now, it's time for a game of What's, What's that, that Mean? First word is Arvo. What's, What's that, that mean? <laughs> ding, ding, ding! The correct answer is B. Afternoon. How about Thongs? What's, What's that, that mean? mean? Ding, ding, ding! The correct answer is C. Our word for flip-flops. Flip-flops. <laughs> and lastly, esky. What's, What's that, that mean? mean? Ding, ding, ding. The correct answer is B. It's a cooler box. Not Australians, tell me your results in the comments below. Going to be honest here, hearing Australian slang in a show like this does make me cringe inside a lot. I think this is simply because it somehow manages to catch me off guard every time, so I know other viewers probably won't feel the same way. It's honestly one of the shows on TV that heavily uses Australian slang. The only other one I can think of is Home and Away. If it's a fight you want, pal, you just got yourself one. I'll find and kill you! Later. And probably Kath and Kim, but I don't associate myself with that. To non-Australians, it's probably more of a fun and interesting take on the English language that adds to the show's entertainment value, and although I don't use most of the phrases myself, it definitely is an accurate representation of how people speak. So I can't hate. When I was a kid, I knew of some kids that would speak in an American accent because they just watched so much American TV. It's weird to think that Bluey probably has the same effect on children across the world. Cultural references and themes. The show is rich in cultural references. For instance, the characters regularly engage in activities that are typical of Australia, such as barbecuing, playing cricket in the backyard, and visiting the beach. These pursuits, which highlight the importance of community, family time, and outdoor play are essential to each episode's narrative. 
Highlighting Australian nature and wildlife. The series highlights Australian distinct biodiversity and natural beauty. Australian wildlife such as kangaroos and kookaburras can all be seen in the background. This gives viewers in Australia a sense of pride and familiarity while also imparting educational value to people worldwide. Imagine you're sitting in like England or somewhere watching the show and then suddenly, what the heck is that? Technically it's called an Australian white ibis, but here we call them bin chickens. Bin chickens! They're found everywhere, but really, I think they love Sydney the most. They are everywhere! Australia's natural beauty is showcased in the representation of its landscapes, which range from lush woodlands to stunning coastlines. Music and soundtrack. The music in Bluey plays a pivotal role in capturing and enhancing its Australian essence. Composer Joff Bush employs native instruments such as the didgeridoo and gum leaf throughout the show's soundtrack, infusing it with authentic Australian soundscapes. By integrating these indigenous instruments, the music not only complements the visual storytelling, but also celebrates Australia's cultural diversity and rich heritage. Positive representation! The show highlights the importance of work-life balance, with Bandit and Chili both having careers but also dedicating time to their children. This depiction resonates with many Australian families striving to achieve the balance. Furthermore, Bluey often addresses topics such as gender roles and equality subtly but effectively, promoting progressive values without lecturing. Lessons on social interactions, emotional intelligence, and life skills are included in many of the episodes. There's even an episode that focuses on infertility and another one that focuses on the concept of the afterlife. This show covers a whole range, which is also why I think adults really enjoy the show. Here are some fun facts about Bluey. Bandit works as an archaeologist, which relates to dogs digging up bones. And Chili works at an airport, which relates to dogs with sniffer dogs. <laughs> the identity behind the kids that voice Bluey and Bingo are private, which is really rare to see. The intro of the show is literally a game of musical statues. Bandit and Chili's voice actors didn't meet in person for four years. And in America, for some reason, some episodes were banned because of this. Hello. Ah! He's having a baby. <gasps> what happens now? Really? Ooh, there's yes! What I think about the show. I think what makes Bluey so remarkable is that its ability to maintain its local charm while appealing to a global audience. The show's universal themes of pleasure, friendship, and family cut across cultural divides, making it relatable to audiences everywhere. However, it never loses sight of Australian uniqueness, finding the ideal harmony between both firmly rooted in the region and widely accessible to people of all backgrounds. For many Australians, including myself, Bluey Bluey has become a source of national pride. It's a show that, devoid of cliches or preconceptions, positively and truthfully portrays Australian culture. I can't remember any other piece of media that managed to achieve this feat. Australia's prominence has increased as a result of Bluey's worldwide popularity, which has exposed a wider audience to the inventiveness, comedy, and way of life of the nation.